how to open assets with C++ in Unreal, which can sometimes be useful if you want to save a few clicks to your user and open the assets for him. So let's get to it. And as usual, here we are in my header file and we have three little functions today. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit so we can see all three of them at the same time. And here they are. So I have first a function to open an asset in the editor. So open asset to window. We can simply feed it the asset we are trying to open. So the asset in the content browser that you want to open, you can feed it to that function and it it's going to open it for you as simple as that. So feed it the asset, it's going to open it. And then after doing that, we also have the possibility to close an asset. So close asset the window, you can simply feed it the asset once again, and that function is simply going to close the asset if it's open. If it's not open, well, you cannot close it, obviously, but if it's open, if there's a window for that asset, it's going to close that window. So good, we can open an asset, close the asset, and also obtain all the list of the assets that are currently open in the editor. So if you have 10 assets open, 20, 30, 50, you can simply call this function and that function is going to tell you all the assets that are currently open and that can be pretty useful if you want to know what is currently open actually. So the function is called get all assets with open the window. You don't have to provide any parameters because the function is only going to fetch all the assets that are currently open and it's going to return them to you in the little array right here. A theory of few objects which contain all the assets that are currently open in the editor and obviously all those functions are only going to work in the editor. You're not going to be able to use that function in a package build because you don't have access to the editor in the package build, obviously. So if you want to open an editor window, you absolutely need to have the editor. That just makes sense. So good. That's it for the header file. Now it's time to jump in the CPP and we're going to start with the includes, which are super simple today. We just need those two includes right here. We need the Unreal ED globals.h to have access to the Unreal editor. And once we have access to the editor, we can simply ask him to give us a subsystem. And the one that we want is the asset editor subsystem. And actually that subsystem already as all the functions that we're going to need today. We won't have to code pretty much anything because everything's in there already. So that's going to be pretty useful. So these two include, so Unreal ED Globals and Asset Editor Subsystem are inside the Unreal ED module. So let's just make sure that the module is already inside the build.cs file. So uh, in my build.cs file, I have my Unreal ED module right here. If you don't have it, obviously just add it in there and it's going to work. Good. So back in the CPP, now we're going to take a look at the functions and they are going to be super simple since most of the logic is already done inside the asset editor subsystem. So when we are trying to open an asset window, what do we want to do? Well, first, I'm just going to make sure that my asset is valid. Otherwise, we can't open a window for it. So I'm just going to check if my asset is equal to null. And if it's equal to null, I'm just going to return right away because I'm not going to be able to open that asset, obviously. So check that the asset is valid. And once you're sure that the asset is valid, the next step is to retrieve the subsystem from the editor, which I'm going to do just like that right here. So inside the G editor, if it is valid, so right here, I'm checking to make sure that my G editor is valid. So if I am in the editor, it should be valid right here. And if it is valid, then I can simply ask him to return me a subsystem. So get editor subsystem. And the subsystem that we want is the USF editor subsystem. That's the one we included at the top. That's the one that contains all the functions. So that's the one we're going to use right here. So G editor, get editor subsystem, USF editor subsystem. And that's going to put it inside a little variable right here. I'm just going to make sure that my subsystem is also valid. Otherwise, I cannot call a function on it. So if it's equal to null, I cannot call any function. I cannot open an asset from it. So I'm just going to return right here. But if the asset is valid and the subsystem is valid, then we can simply ask the subsystem to open the asset for us. And that's super simple. So asset editor subsystem, open editor for asset and feeding it the asset we're trying to open. And that's it. The function is going to try to open the asset for you. And it's going to let you do if it actually worked or not. So that's pretty awesome. Actually, I have my boolean right here that contains all that information. And the asset is either open or not. And I'm just going to return a little bit more information to my user to see if it worked or not. And that's it. That's super simple. And actually, the close asset window is as simple as that. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to do it super quickly. First, we have to make sure that the asset is still valid. So the asset we receive as input, if it's not valid, we cannot close the window for it because, well, there's no window for an invalid asset. So here I'm just going to check if it's valid. If it's valid, that's good. Then we can retrieve the subsystem from the editor, same as the previous function. So asset is our subsystem right here, which I'm also going to make sure that it is valid. And then if I have my subsystem and my valid asset, then I can simply ask my subsystem, so asset editor subsystem, close all editors for asset and providing it the asset. 
That function is simply going to try to close all the windows that are currently open for the asset that you're giving it. And if it finds some, it's going to close them. And actually, since it's possible, depending on your asset type, that you have multiple windows open, that function is going to close all of them. And it's also going to tell you how many window it actually closed. So if you didn't have any window open, it's going to close zero window. Obviously, if you have one window open, it's going to close one. If you have 10,000 window open, it's going to close them all. And it's going to give you a little number right here that says 10,000 because you just closed 10,000 windows and that's a lot of windows. Yeah. Anyway, this function is going to close all the windows that are open for that specific asset and tell you how many windows it actually closed. And I'm actually just going to use that little int right here to tell my user if it was a success or not. So if I was able to close at least one window or more than zero window in this case, I'm going to tell my user that it was a success. Otherwise, it's a fail because, well, it's not actually a fail because if the window is already closed, why would you want to close it? But in my case, I just wanted to have a little bit more variation in my error message. So here, if I didn't have any window open when I call my close asset window function, I'm just going to tell my user, no, you try to close an asset that is not open. So here's an error message, but it probably doesn't matter in your case because you probably want to close the asset and it's closed. If it's not open, it's closed. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Now we're done with this function and it's time to take a look at the last function, the get all assets with open window. So I'll scroll down a little bit right here. And since we don't have any assets to validate, I'm just going to retrieve my subsystem right away, right here. So I have my asset editor subsystem. I'm also going to make sure that it is still valid, obviously. And one once I'm sure that it is valid, then I can simply ask him to return me all the assets that are currently open in the editor. And that's actually super simple. Uh, inside the asset editor subsystem, you have a function called get all edited assets, and that's going to simply return you all the assets that are currently open. Hey, we're actually done. We can simply return that to the user and we're done actually. Uh, yeah, as I said, it was super simple. Good. So now it's time to jump in Unreal to see if it actually works. And here I am in Unreal and I don't even have a level today, but I have a few assets right here in the content browser. We're going to open all those assets uh, using the functions we created today. So I have a material, a mesh, a skeletal mesh, a sound and a texture. We're going to open them all to see if it actually works with all types of assets. And to do that, we're going to use a user interface that I have right here, right here at the top. And that's the user interface we're going to use right here. I have a little combo box that contains all the paths of my different assets we're going to try to open today. So here they are on the right. And when I click on open, it's going to try to open that asset. When I click on close, it's going to try to close that asset. And when I click on get all opened, then it's simply going to loop through all the windows that are currently open in the editor and print their name in the little information section that I have right here. So we're going to simply display a list of all the assets that are currently open in the editor and see if the function actually works. And that's as simple as that. Now in the graph, we can see that we don't have much code right here. When we click on the button open, we simply load the assets uh, that is displayed in the combo box. So this is the text in my combo box. I'm loading the asset and then I'm calling my function open asset window, which should open the asset for us. And then same thing when we click on close, we're simply loading the asset from the path in the combo box and then calling the function close asset window. And once we're done opening and closing windows, we can also get the asset that are currently open and display them. And to do that, when I click on the button to get all the assets, I'm simply calling the function we created to get all the assets with open window. If it was a success, I'm going to build my own string. Otherwise, I'm just going to display the default error message as usual. But if it's a success, I decided that I want to display all the names of the open asset. So I'm just going to build my own little info message right here. I'm going to start by a prefix to say that these are the open asset in the editor. Then I'm going to loop through all the open asset and build my own string right here using the path of each of those assets. So each path is going to be displayed on a new line, which is going to build my little info message that I'm then going to display on screen it looks a little bit more complicated than it actually is. So good, let's go see if it works. So I'm going to run my editor utility widget right here and then my material is selected by default. So let's just try to open my material. Hey, it opened the material. I can close the material. Yeah, that's good. I can open, close, try to close again. No, I don't have a material open, so I cannot close the material, obviously. So I'm just going to reopen it. And now I have my material open. If I try to get all the assets that are currently open in the editor, it's going to build a little string for us. And we have a lot of assets right here. We have the material, so that's good. We have a random one right here, the material editor preview parameter seven. I don't know what that is, but Unreal opened that somewhere in the background for us. And same thing for the preview material four. Yeah, and I think that those windows actually close when you close the material, you close the material and then get all open asset. Here we go. Those random windows are actually opening at the same time as the 
other material and also closing at the same time. So if I open my material, get all open, and now I have all those random windows, but if I close my material, either here or by our function, it's going to close also those windows. So good, we're doing the same exact behavior as we have in the editor, and that's what we want. Perfect. Now I can reopen my material. Oh, actually, before that, when I click on get all open, I still have my widget that is open, and that's a bit weird. Actually, no, it's not. It's right here at the top, so I'm just going to close my widget. Now if I get all open, I don't have any open asset. Good, that's exactly what we want. Okay, I can reopen my material. It works. I can open my mesh. Yes, it works. Can I open skeletal mesh? It also works. Good. My sound. Here we go. And finally, my texture. Yes. So good. I have all the different assets open. So I can open any type of asset and I can also close any of them. So I can close my skeletal mesh right here. Here we go. Skeletal mesh is gone. I can get all the open asset. Here we go. I have my list of open asset. It doesn't make sense too much because of my material. So I'm just going to close my material for now. And now we can see that I have my sound open, my mesh open, and my texture open. And that's actually true. That's all the assets that I currently have in the editor. And now I can do anything I want. I can try to close my sound, open my sound, same thing for my texture, try to open the texture, close the texture, and etc. You can do anything you want, and that's going to be it for today's video. So I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.